Hey everyone. Oh, not everyone. Hello, you lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need to drop off. I'm dealing with a metric incident that's related to a change issue that I'm involved with. Sorry, guys. No worries. Good luck. Okay, let's get started. So, um, so hello everyone. Um, happy Monday. Um, so we have no announcements this week, unless anyone wants to dive in with anything. Um, I'm taking Wednesday off. Bye. I'm done with announcements. Thank you. <laughs> Short and sweet. Um, awesome. So, on to discussion points. So, first point uh, is mine. We're halfway through the quarter, which uh, is kind of exciting and maybe terrifying. <laughs> it's like mid September. So, uh, I thought it would be, I'll put some updates on the actual, um, <clears throat> particularly the key result uh, issues as well, but just thought it'd be nice to check in on how we're getting on with these things. So, um, our first key result is automate manual deployment approval. And one of the sort of measures in there, of course, is MTTP. Uh, I was gonna put a screenshot in, but I didn't get it in time, but uh, it's looking super healthy right now. Like we are um, comfortably below 24 um, hours on that one. So well done to everyone who's supported and kind of helped with that stuff. Um, and then second piece of that is around replacing manual deployment approval. Uh, Alessio, do you want to give us kind of brief view of that stuff? Sure. So we recently merged the, the new metrics that now are enforced. So it's basically we have this new check and now we are going to move forward to let the system warn us if the situation is not really warrant, inform us if it's time to maybe start a deployment. Awesome. Um, and then our next key result, we have uh, all stateless services on unmodified Helm chart. Um, Scarbeck, do you want to give us a bit of a view of that one? Yeah, very quickly. Uh, we just migrated the Git WebSockets or excuse me, the WebSockets yeah, has been moved over to production. However, it's caused an incident. We're now missing some of our metrics coming from HA proxy. That I guess that's why Jarvis is not currently in the meeting. Um, batch two for the Sidekick migration is on its way into Kubernetes as we speak. I started that change request like two minutes before this meeting started. Um, I don't recall what's next on the list. Uh, I think we're going to kind of maybe pause a little bit on the migration, start focusing efforts on um, uh, multi-cluster configurations uh, because the if we're going to start taking client traffic, we're going to greatly increase the cost of our network um, being spread across multiple zones instead of GCP. Uh, so we want to make sure we tackle that in some way, shape, or form. And then I will continue with batch three of the Psychic Catch-All stuff obviously. So, so, you know, we're making progress. Yeah, making good progress there. Um, thank you. Um, and then there's another key result uh, affects you lot a little bit less, uh, or, or indirectly affects you lot, I suppose I should probably say. Uh, so across all of engineering, um, managers are doing dip training. So uh, there's a target, I think, Engineering are on, have almost completed, uh, not engineering, 
development all the managers have nearly completed i think it's just a couple of outstanding and infrastructure we're tracking here so the goal our we have a key result all managers to complete dip training this quarter so you can keep uh, keep track of that stuff and also if you if you want to watch any of the videos they're um, online and freely available as well so um, cool so as well as all of those things we also have kind of ongoing release velocity work which isn't super well tracked in our key results actually which is a little bit of a shame because it's it's super important stuff uh, but I've just called it out separately here so we have uh, three things going on here um, focusing on the removing the blocking nature of security releases. So Myra, maybe do you want to give us a brief view of that one? Yeah, sure. So we are working on changing how the security merge requests are processed. The one targeting master is going to be merged early than the security release and the backports are going to be merged during the security release. And that allows us basically to combine security fixes with the auto deploy and deploying security fixes at the same space, space, uh, pace bleh, at uh, any other regular fix. Awesome. Um, sounds good. And then also we've got the um, work that Yurik is doing around um, rebuilding the release code stuff. So that's in progress. Um, and then finally, we have a new one, which I've just literally added onto the release velocity page, uh, which is your one, Scabek, self-serve registry deployments. Just pick this one up. So we're still in the planning, well, less planning phase than we're still, I've created an epic and rolled out the various issues or created the various issues for this. Um, it's just a matter of picking up the work and beginning. Um, the end goal here is that the uh, registry, the team working on the container registry will be able to deploy their components separately from all other components of GitLab in its entirety. It, it just, uh, no, uh, I mean, the, the links is pointing to us, it's the deployment uh, epic, not the sort of service registry deployment. Thank you. I'll update that. Cool. Is the goal so, behind that just so that team can kind of roll out changes faster and independently? Yep. Yep. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of integrations with various components outside of GitLab, and um, they're going to have their own database at some point. So they really want the ability to deploy outside of GitLab itself just to uh, iterate faster than where we currently do today, I guess. Awesome. So lots going on, um, which leads me neatly into my next point. We've got lots going on. Um, so we do. So there's a few things um, that I want to kind of tackle around our workflow. One is the fact that we don't really have a workflow that works for everybody, or certainly not one that everybody uh, like um, follows or maybe find wants to follow or finds easy to follow. So I want to definitely address that. But rather than just um, saying straight off like we should just do this thing that's in the handbook it seems like it'd be a good idea to like iterate on this a little bit and see if we can actually find one that maybe fits better with the way we do work so there's going to probably be a few pieces like more than a couple of pieces to this because there's various parts to our workflow but um i just put up an issue on the, on piece one around priority of work so I've put out the goals in that and um, no expectation we'll make a decision on this today, like maybe towards the end of the week or maybe even Monday when you're ex back. Um, but my rough goals on this are around my, my kind of, I guess my biggest goal is around us not trying to do everything at once all at the same time. So I think at GitLab we do have more things in progress than like, other places I've worked at and I think part of that's because of the async working and so there's just that expectation that something will sit for a little bit longer than it maybe would if we were all sitting together and focusing on the same thing so I think that's fine but um, I do want us to be able to easily recognize that like oh I have three things in progress and I'm desperately trying to do all of them and actually I could just be really really focusing on one thing um, and have the others more kind of like secondary tasks. 
And I think the other pieces around that are knowing how urgently you need to unblock somebody. So if you're sort of working on your, I don't know, theoretically like priority three task and you get a request from someone else and there's it's their priority one task you know maybe you have a bit more urgency on that but then i think the other bits that we don't do well maybe we do but not very explicitly um if i'm picking up this new piece of work what does that mean for other things so i think we've talked about it a little bit more recently in kubernetes i'm sure we all have to do it all the time which is like oh i was working on this thing but actually this other task has come up, should I intentionally switch my focus or not? So those were the kind of things that I would like us to be able to be a, like remind ourselves, I think, to do, because I think we are doing them. We do switch tasks. We do help each other. We do have multiple things going on at any one time and we manage those. But I would like our workflow to actually be able to make that easier for us to remember, like, oh, hang on, I, it looks like I have two things going on at the same time and that's going to be pressure on you right so i think that's the main thing i'd like to tackle here so I've put some ideas there um feel free to take some time to read through and add comments but um alessia do you want to just mention the comment that you've already popped on yeah thank you because um, maybe i i didn't get um the, your point so this is the thing that is not clear to me in the um, in the current proposal because uh, we you mentioned the fact that basically when you pick the new thing when you when you finish your task there's something becomes your next p1 so we have some kind of priority switching which reflects the the order of priority of the things that i'm currently working on which is relative to the to the given uh, set of time so right now i have a p1 and a p2 maybe so what I, what I, what is not clear to me with this is how can I understand the original priority of some kind of work because maybe uh, Scarbeck is working on a something that was P one since the beginning, and I should help him because maybe my P one item was just a P four. I just work it through all my mm -hmm. lists and it's no long, it's not more important than the thing that Scarbeck is doing. Yeah. Okay. That's a really great point. Yeah. So I think probably the way I was thinking about it, which isn't super clear in the way I've written it is, um, I, a tar like whilst we're actively, um, let me try and get this right. So the way I was thinking about it is I have a task and it's a P1, um, for as long as that task is in progress, that would most likely be my P1 right? Like that's my number one priority. And I might be working on P2s, but they are still P2s because as much as I can be, I'll be doing my P1. Um, when I close my P1, something else promotes up to my P1. So it might be one of my P2s moves up, or it might be that at that point I see, oh, actually Scarbeck's got this other P1. I could help him. That was the way I was thinking about it. Yeah. What, what, so maybe we can use our own delivery P1, P2, P3, P4 for this. In th what we are doing with priority items in, in, at company level and what we used to do at, at team level was actually reflecting the, the actual priority of that kind of work. So that if I'm working on something that originally was P2 or P3, even if it's my top priority because it's the thing that I should do by the end of the week, month, whatever, if something's P1 pops up, I would drop my work and start working on that. Because we have this relative priority between tasks and this gets lost in, in this kind of translation because m my thing now is P1 because it's my uh, main work item, but Maybe, but, yeah, but it's not, it's not the, the type of P1 that we do. When we create a new P1 means that, for instance, release tools is broken. And so release managers cannot deploy. So no matter what I was doing, how important it was, I have to, if I'm available and I know how to fix it, I should fix this. I feel yeah. like we need to differ, differentiate between what is a team priority and a personal priority, perhaps. Because currently, right now, everything assigned to me, except for one issue, is a P4. 
um, that's probably incorrect though, right? And I think that's my point, right? Is at the moment, I think the vast majority of things we work on, we just leave as a people. But actually, I think that's the gap which we have, which is we don't, we don't prioritize um, work as we go. So that's kind of another, I think, a piece that we should... So the pieces I'm kind of thinking around in this workflow, one is around how do we prioritize work? Um, and at the moment, I think we're doing a pretty decent job of actually individually prioritizing in that I think you're all good at going, I'll pick up this thing and then I know I have that thing next. But what we don't really have is any way for you to influence what somebody else picks up. And I think that might be a bit of a gap. So if one of the pieces I think will be to work out how to, as a team, we agree on these are our top priority pieces of work. Um, then I think there is a bit around the actual uh, workflow of a ticket and like the state it's in, but that was the hardest bit. So I, I'll come back to that bit in a, in a bit, but I, ideally we'll have, we'll actually, it'll be super obvious. Like this ticket is, we're deciding on a solution or this ticket is ready to be picked up for coding or this one is actually in progress. So just kind of a visual view for that. Um, but yeah, it's a really good point, Alessio, around, do you think, so I think the P1 stuff, like a corrective action, I think we know how to handle. We handle those really well, like, which is it's a P1 and something else gets dropped. And I guess we, we kind of, we do deprioritize something else to pick up that thing. But yeah, you're right about the thing being lost. Um, and is that, used across the whole company that like work would stay in a p1 p2 way yeah kind of yeah the point is that maybe it starts before like we are doing but then they have product manager that maybe helps prioritizing because something uh, may change around this thing so it may become a more important task to work on which is something that we are also are doing but we do we realize more on individuals speaking the right thing because we don't have the, a PM that just prepared the kickoff for the month. That, that's probably, this is the big change, the big difference that we have. Yeah. So if as a theme or the, the engineering manager, we realize that something is now it's more important than when he used to be when we wrote it, then we just bump the priority to, because now it's more important. But I think that Scarbeck's point is a good one. So maybe we need another set of scoped labels that are just, kind of personal priorities so that we can say, these are, this are the things that Alessio is working on and they are sorted by priorities so that others can understand how this is affecting Alessio's work or others' work, but, is, but maybe it, it doesn't reflect to highest priority in terms of company goals. I would argue that we could probably reuse the existing delivery labels and we could use the company provided labels. So the scoped priority labels that already exists in the GitLab org, we could use those as priority labels so that all the stuff that, I'm using me as an example, all the stuff that's assigned to me would exist as a P4, but as a delivery label, it'd be a P1 or a P2 because I'm actively working on that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a pretty great idea. Okay. Let me see if I can add a bit more detail to this and let's keep going. But that sounds like it might be a good, um, a good shape. So, uh, Jeff, we're just chatting about the uh, delivery team workflow stuff. So it's, I'll add on some details on the issue, but um, say this is part one, version one of, of some iterative stuff. So feel free to look through this like maybe over the week and uh, we'll gather some stuff um, on this one. Awesome. Was there anything else that people wanted to bring up? Well, uh, I should have done this in the announcement, but yeah. Uh, I posted a link in our channel about the um, IC gearing working group. So I just pre prepared um, an epic where I'm tracking the what, what we are doing in the working group and I'm collecting feedback from the whole department. So if you want to take a look at it, because uh, sometimes I'm asking feedbacks or I'm asking ideas of things that I have to bubble up in the working group 
uh, meeting or just informing what we are doing. So if you have something that you want to discuss, just drop a line there. Cool, thanks for sharing that. So is there anything else people want to bring up on the recording? <laughs>